The following program is sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're walking through the professional process for encapsulating a crawl space. We'll begin with Mike Hoganson from Standard Water Control Systems, who will introduce our project and explain why these homeowners were having their crawl space encapsulated. We'll also see how an egress window can be professionally installed to create safe, usable living space in a home's lower level. And we'll finish up learning more about the crawl space encapsulation process and see the stunning end result. So we have a lot to cover today and we'll get started after these messages. If you've ever been in a home that had an exposed crawl space, you most likely experience its dank, musty smell. Well, there is a solution to this problem, and we'll get to see it firsthand as we catch up with Mike Hoganson from Standard Water Control Systems, who explains how his encapsulation process can rid a home of radon, water, and moisture problems. Well, Mike, kind of a nice day out here, a little rain in the forecast, always good for your line of work. Beautiful day for us. You know, I, I can see why you got called out to this location, even though it's kind of higher than a lot of the houses around here. Look at the clay soil and all the moisture that's in there. They must have a heck of a water problem. Well, this neighborhood is known for water problems. Every home in this area either has a water problem in their basement or they've got a drain tile system. Now, speaking of drain tile systems, is this one of those buried discharge that we talked about in previous shows? Yeah, this is our optional free flow discharge system. We've got Gary working on that and he'll get that installed and we can take a look at that when he's done. So obviously, you're out here to put a drain tile system in the basement? Yes, this, this uh, homeowner is having several problems though, so this isn't just a normal home where we're putting in a drain tile system as we saw before. Uh, this homeowner is having problems with radon, they're having problems with the uh, crawl space with open soil and uh, damp smells and mold and mildew. Sure. I've experienced that where you're down in a basement. You got open dirt in the crawl space, it's going to lead to, especially during those warm, humid summer months, that dank earthy smell. Right, so we're going to solve that by putting in a drain tile system in the main part of the basement, then we're going to put a drain tile system in the crawl space and encapsulate it. Then we're going to tie a radon mitigation system into our drain tile and bring that up through the roof in the garage. Wow, I can't wait to see how you guys will actually get in there and are able to put a drain tile system in the crawl space. Those are only about this tall usually. Yeah, this, it can be very difficult to get done. So that radon mitigation system is actually tied into the drain tile system? Well, yes, the drain tile system is the best radon removal system you can have. We tie into it, it draws the soil gases out from underneath the floor, we get good communication from underneath the entire slab, so we're able to take a home that has levels in 10, 15 picocuries per liter of air, and we'll bring it down to 0.3, which is about equal to outside air. Wow, that's great, great peace of mind for the homeowners, whether you have a radon issue or not, you're guaranteed not to have one once the system's tied in. Yes, and, and I'd like to mention too, it also helps reduce the humidity and dampness. I had a customer that had two sons with breathing problems. They had an open crawl space. Uh, it, it was full of creepy crawlers and dirt and all kinds of moldy stuff. A typical stuff. crawl space. <laughs> right. So we went in there and we took all the garbage out, we put drain tile in, we encapsulated it, we put in a, a radon mitigation system, the smells went away and the breathing problems for our sons went away. Wow, that's a great story and you know if you've ever experienced a crawl space or a dark dank basement, I mean I can see how these systems must work and I'm anxious to see how you can install them so let's go find out. Let's take a look. Well, as you can see, this crawl space encapsulation is going to take a while to complete, so we'll stop back when they're done. But now let's head across town where Standard Water Control is helping to create safe, usable living space by installing an egress window to this home's lower level. Well, Mike, looks like the guys are hard at work digging a pretty big hole out here in the front yard. 
Well, this is for the egress window. You can see they're digging it by hand. That way we don't have to bring any heavy equipment in here and, uh, and we won't d destroy or damage their lawn. Wow, well, you know, when you told me we were going to be seeing the installation of the egress window, I expected to see a backhoe here, but your company takes the time to protect the lawn, the landscape. You even have plywood going all the way out to the truck to wheel the wheelbarrows on. That's a sign of an experienced contractor who's really conscientious, in my opinion. Well, we, we want to make sure that we don't solve one problem and create another. So we dig it all by hand. And first of all, we will uh, call for locate to make sure there's no electrical lines or, or gas lines so you don't hit them. This is not a job that you want to do if you're not experienced. Sure, obviously. So you want to call a Gopher State One. Probably want to get a building permit as well? Oh, absolutely. You know, as I look at this, the guys are digging down pretty deep, but even from the surface down, that's wet soil. It's no wonder these homeowners experience a basement water problem. Well, it's a, it's a heavy clay soil, as I explained earlier, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised when they get to the bottom of this window well that they're going to find water. Oh, no kidding. So take us through the egress window installation process. Well, first we dig the hole. We remove the uh, debris from the job site in our trucks. We haul it away. And then uh, we'll be cutting a hole in the wall and knocking out the block to install the window. And then we'll get the window well. But we'll get that a little bit later. Okay, well, let's step back, get out of their way, and when we get to that stage, we'll pick it up again. Sounds good. We'll continue with the installation process and see the completed egress window next when we continue with today's Home Remodeler. In our last segment, we learned that properly encapsulating a crawl space can rid a home of radon, water, and unpleasant odors. We also learned how an egress window can add safe, usable space to a home's lower level. Now let's continue with Mike Hoganson from Standard Water Control Systems as he takes us through the professional installation process of this home's egress window. Wow, those guys made short work of cutting and opening in this foundation for an egress window. Yes, they did. Well, they're experienced guys, and they've done this quite a bit. Yeah, you know, I recognize Scott. He's been with you a number of years. About 20 years. Yeah, and you know, no matter what project I'm visiting on a particular show, there's no substitute for experience. And that's a good lesson for homeowners. Ask about the experience. How long has a crew been working for your company? Absolutely. With experience, you get a good quality job. OK, so explain that sawing process. That was pretty impressive. Well, the first thing he did is he spoke to the homeowner and they discussed where they wanted the window to go. And they decided they wanted it right underneath the window up above, you know, to make it aesthetically pleasing. Uh, then they dug the hole and then they marked off the window and they used a hydraulic ring saw so they could cut it from the outside and keep all the water and dirt and mud on the outside. It's amazing how quickly that was able to cut through the concrete. Like butter. Does it matter if it's a block or poured foundation? Well, we do poured foundations. Uh, yeah, it, it's a little more difficult with poured foundations. But it is to... possible to do. Oh, yeah. And does a homeowner have to be putting in a drain tile system to install an egress window? No, absolutely not. We work on homes that are finished off as well, where they've got carpet and sheetrock up already. So again, it's important to keep that mess on the outside. OK, so that makes sense. And I noticed that. Once he saw it, it didn't come all the way through. They scored the inside, and then it was just a good old-fashioned sledgehammer? Yep, we just knock it out into the hole, and then we take that concrete block and we haul it out to our truck. And then what happens with it there? Is there any way to recycle it? Well, yeah, we take it to the uh, recycle pit, and they grind it up and make road base out of it. So there's good use for the material rather than just going to a landfill and filling it up? Oh, absolutely. OK, so what's the next step in the process? Well, Scott's going to measure it all off. He's out in the truck right now, and he's uh, planing off some wood so he can frame out the window with green treated lumber. And he's got to plane it down so we get the custom fit. So you actually have a mobile shop that you can custom make any materials you need for each application? Absolutely. It's got planers in it, saws, air compressors, all built into the truck. Boy, that's got to make for a better end result, because when you're dealing with rough edges like this, you never know if it's going to be totally exact and you need to customize it quite frequently I'd guess. That's true and Scott does an excellent job with that. And you know it's good that you're using treated lumber because concrete as we all know is an eternal wick, moisture comes up but these homeowners will never have to worry about it rotting out with the proper materials here. Absolutely. So they have quite a bit of work here to finish up. Why don't we let them get back at it and we'll pick it up right at the end and see the new egress window. Sounds good. Oh, 
looks like the guys are nearing completion of the addition of this egress window. That was pretty slick seeing it being set right down there. Yeah, it's a great system, Stu. What I really like about this is the construction. Uh, it's plastic, it's core filled. It'll never rust, never rot, never deteriorate. It's UV protected. I really like the way we're able to mount it to the wall. If you remember, we had a couple of beads of caulking here. Sure, I remember that. Okay, so that way when we put the window well in, we anchor this in, we can seal the window well to the wall so no water, no dirt can wash in around it. Okay, and then these metal angle irons help protect the window well and won't allow it to push in. Oh, because there must be a tremendous amount of pressure hydrostatic pressure from all the clay and the moisture that we saw when they were digging it out. If you didn't fasten it properly, it could just cave right in. I see a lot of them that do that, especially the galvanized window wells where they can't get down deep enough to do the anchoring at the bottom. Well, this really speaks for itself and that makes sense with the angle iron. You're really securely attaching this to the house. Now, I noticed that instead of just dumping dirt in here for backfill against this, you're using washed rock again. Why is that? Well, still, in the winter, the, the frost would grab the window well, okay, whether it be a uh, escape well, window well, a block, or, or a timber window well. The frost can grab it and actually heave it out of the ground. Well, by putting gravel around it, it acts as ball bearings, so the frost can't grab this and won't pull it out of the ground. Wow, that's the voice of experience talking right there. All the years of putting in egress windows, you don't have to worry about it. Now, as I look down in there, you have a nice bed of gravel, but also a drain pipe that leads back into the house? That's in case water gets down there, Stu, it can drain into our drain tile and get pumped away. Okay. So that way the water won't overflow and flood your basement. Sure, and obviously this is outside, so rain will get down there. Homeowners don't have to worry about that. Now, when we look at the window itself, you added some protecto wrap around there. I take it that's very important. Well, certainly, Stu. That keeps the elements out, keeps the wind out, and the water from getting in behind the window and to your finished sheetrock, etc. And speaking of finishing it, are they going to finish it off with some kind of trim boards? Oh, yeah, we're going to put some rough cut cedar around that that the homeowner can either paint or stain to their liking. Wow, you know, I really love seeing this drop down in here. You have nice, usable, legal space to live down in a basement. You've increased the value of your home, and you have the safety factor. In the event of emergency, they can crawl right out, and the scape well gives you steps right up to the ground. You know, Stu, just the other day we installed one of these in a, in a homeowner's home. She, she was so excited she put it on Facebook. She had her three-year-old daughter go out in the window wall, and she could climb out through these steps. It's, it's a wonderful system. Stick around. We'll head back out to our crawl space encapsulation project next when we continue with today's Home Remodeler. We all know how water in the soil can eventually find its way into a basement. How a professionally installed drain tile system can solve this problem. But in cases where the soil becomes super saturated, extreme pressures can develop causing damage to a foundation wall. So let's catch up with Mike Hoganson from Standard Water Control Systems to see their solution for stabilizing a foundation. Oh my gosh, Mike, take a look at this wall. It's so bold, it's cracked. Looks to me like it's about to cave in. Can a homeowner do anything about this? We can solve this problem. We can stabilize the wall, keep it in place so it never moves again, Stu. I look at this two by four over here. That's pushed out a good inch, at least. That's correct, Stu. What we have here is a wall that's moved over time, uh, more than likely due to the expansive soil that we have here. We've got heavy clay soil that when it gets wet, it expands and puts pressure against the wall. It's amazing what water pressure can do to a foundation wall. So what can a homeowner do in a situation like this? Well, there's uh, three options that I can come up with. Uh, one would be to core fill the wall. You'd stick a rod down inside the wall and fill it full of cement. And again, these are hollow concrete blocks. So is that a pretty good solution? Well, it works, but if you have a water problem as this homeowner did, you would then be making the wall completely solid and then your drain tile system wouldn't work. Okay, so really you don't want to do that because obviously they have you in here putting in a drain tile system. That's correct. So they had a water problem and the wall is moving. So the, another option would be to put a uh, steel I-beam in here, Stu. Okay. How does that work? Well, you'd bolt it into the rim joist and you bolt it into the floor. The problem with that is you lose about six inches of room in the home and over time that I-beam can rust. Also, you have to bolt it into the floor, but we've removed the floor. Oh, okay, so in this application, steel I-beam definitely isn't an option. 
Not at all. Okay, so how are you going to tackle this problem and provide a solution for the homeowner? Well, we're going to stabilize the wall with carbon fiber straps from Fortress. It's a space age engineered technology that we epoxy right to the wall. Wow, what is it? You said it's a carbon fiber straps? That's right. And this is really that strong that it can stop this from moving any further? Absolutely. When installed properly and encased in epoxy, it's going to be stronger than steel. It'll never rust, rot, deteriorate. And by the way, when put on the wall, you can paint over it as well, so you wouldn't even know it was there. Sure, so if you were going to finish it off, there's still a solution that's very unobtrusive. And it, if I own this home and I wasn't going to finish it off, I'd still want to solve this problem. I wouldn't want the chance of that foundation coming in any further, that's for sure. Okay, what's the next step in the process then? Well, the first thing we do is we have to grind the wall down to the virgin block so we get good contact. We grind all the paint off, and then what we're going to do is we're going to install the necktie. The necktie is bolted into the rim joist, and as you can see up here, it comes over the block, so that can be epoxied into the block, and then our carbon fiber strap would go here and epoxied, and it ties it all together. After we've got the neckties in place, we would put epoxy on the wall, then we would install our carbon fiber strap and encase it in epoxy. Also, we have to put in blocking so we can transfer the load from the wall back to the floor joists. That way, if this wall ever wanted to move, it would actually have to move the whole house. And that just isn't going to happen, Stu. So really, what you're doing is tying it all together so this entire structure is one, and the only way it could ever move is if the whole unit moved. Absolutely. And so the homeowners, again, once this is in place, they're never going to have to worry about this wall moving at all. But what about these cracks here? I mean, is that a cause for concern? Well, we have to fill the cracks so the wall won't move again. When the uh, soil outside dries, it's going to try to close this gap up a little bit. This is an engineered system. This will never move again once we've got this in place. Okay, so what Don's going to do is he's going to go ahead, once these are in place, go ahead, fill this in with concrete. And again, you might have a bowed wall, but it's never going to move in or out anymore, and the homeowner doesn't have to worry. It's going to be fine, structurally sound. They can feel free to finish off their basement. Warranted for the lifetime of the foundation. So far in today's show, we saw the beginning of a crawl space encapsulation project that will rid the home of radon, water, and unpleasant odor problems. We also saw the process for adding an egress window to a home's lower level. Now let's see the stunning transformation of the crawl space as we finish up with Mike Hoganson from Standard Water Control Systems. Wow, Mike, I have to say this is the cleanest crawl space I've ever been in. Well, it's a big difference from this morning, isn't it? Still? Yeah, it sure is. We poked our heads in here and the guys were just getting started. I noticed it was like a lot of crawl spaces I see where a homeowner or a builder just lays down some poly on top, but that really isn't doing all that much good, is it? No, not really, Stu. There was still a lot of water being trapped underneath that plastic, uh, causing a humidity problem, potentially a mold problem and probably why that homeowner you said was experiencing that earthy, dank smell that was rather annoying. Well, for her sons especially. Sure. So, in answer to your question, the plastic really was causing more of a problem than it was solving. It wouldn't let the ground breathe. Sure, and so the homeowners out there look in your crawl space, if you have just plastic down, not professionally installed like this, you might be doing more harm than good. Okay, let's talk about this system. What was trying to be accomplished here? Well, uh, we had a water problem. In this home, we also had a humidity problem, a dampness problem, you know, smells and so on, and we had a radon problem. So what we are going to do to solve this is install a drain tile system and a radon mitigation system and encapsulate the crawl space. Sure, and when we walked in, I saw the guys there jackhammering out around the other area, the full basement, and that looked like other shows that we have done, pretty standard. But when you get into here, this is a little more challenging. Well, yeah, it's, it's a lot different. It's much shorter, too, for, for the tall guys. We had to level all the dirt off. We dug a trench around the perimeter so we could take the water that's in here and go downhill into the sump basin on the other side of the wall here in the main part of the basement. We then put the drain tile in, drilled holes in each and every cavity of the block to drain the water that's in the block out. Then we put a dimple board up the footing, across the footing, and up the wall a little bit so we could get some airspace between the wall 
and the Diamond Bright Vapor Guard here. So why is it important to have an airspace right there? Well, we want to let that water that's in there to drain out, and also we want to be able to circulate the air through the block. Okay, that way we can help dry the block out. See, with the radon mitigation system, we tie that right into the drain tile system. Okay. okay, that way we're using the drain tile system as a radon mitigation system, and we got good communication all the way around the foundation here. So since you are tying the radon mitigation system into the drain tile system, do you have to do anything different with that drain tile system? Well, yes. If you remember, we put in our patented diamond drainage board. Sure. Okay, in areas that are outside the crawl space here, we sealed the top of that so we wouldn't be sucking indoor air out and blowing it up above the roof line and causing possibly a backdraft or negative air pressure within the home. Okay, that makes sense. So a lot of attention to detail when you're dealing with all these different challenges of getting rid of the radon, getting rid of the water, tying the systems together and encapsulating the crawl space. Okay, continue on with the installation process. Okay, uh, we put the drain tile in, then we started by leveling the whole area off with a bed of gravel so we could get good communication underneath the, the diamond bright vapor guard. And you know, you bring up the gravel. I talked to Jared. He said there was between five and six tons of gravel that were carried down in individual buckets and then dumped out here. And you notice there's no windows in this basement. Yeah, so they had to carry them up and down the stairs. And when I say up the stairs, I saw them carrying chunks of the concrete when they were putting in the drain tile system in the regular basement. They had to carry that out by hand. That's hard work. Hard working crew. Yeah, good guys. They are. All right, now this home had some high levels of radon. When we're done here, Stu, I'm quite confident we're going to get this radon level down below about 0.3, which is equal to outside air. And we're also going to improve the smell, the dampness, or the humidity within the home because, again, we're drawing all that soil gas out from underneath this diamond bright vapor guard and blowing it up through the roof. Boy, that's great peace of mind for the homeowner. Brought up the diamond bright vapor guard. What is this? This is pretty neat and it seems to be pretty durable. It is. It's our service mark Diamond Bright Vapor Guard. It's a three ply membrane. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to puncture that or tear it. Tear area. resistant and puncture proof. Why is that so important? I think of a crawl space. Wouldn't just regular poly be just fine if you taped it down? Because nobody really uses a crawl space. Well, first of all, Stu, we have to seal this airtight. Okay, it's, I mean, it's so tight that if you turned off the uh, radon mitigation system, the soil gas would start building up underneath here and making it an, into a balloon. No way, really? Really. And, you know, over time, you wouldn't maybe think of this, but now that we've done this, the homeowner can use this area for storage. You can put cardboard boxes down here and not have to worry about them molding up or getting mildew. Wow. That's a good point. I never thought of that. You're really taking unusable space and creating good usable storage space for a homeowner down there. And you know, this whole system has opened my eyes. I'm sure it's opened a lot of eyes of the viewers out there today. If you have a crawl space, talk to a professional company that can encapsulate it like you guys do. This is just phenomenal. And just in the short time that we were here today, it already smells drier, fresher, and it's a lot brighter. Well, just the, the difference a couple hours can make, huh? It's a great option if you want to get rid of that earthy smell, get rid of radon. It solves a lot of problems, and if you have it professionally done, it didn't take all that long. It took, what, about a day to do this? Yeah, it took exactly a day. Well, I appreciate you coming on today and showing us how professionals encapsulate a crawl space. Thanks. It's been a pleasure. Now here are some key points to help summarize today's show. If you have a crawl space with an exposed dirt floor, it might be a good idea to have the surrounding air tested for radon. And even if you don't have high levels, consider adding an encapsulation system like we saw in today's program that can rid your home of water problems and unpleasant odors in addition to radon gas. Also, if you're looking to create some safe, usable lower level living space, consider installing an egress window. And in either case, to get your best value, be sure to do your homework and hire a knowledgeable contractor whose crews are experienced and offer the latest products and technologies. Well, we're all out of time for this week's show. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time on Today's Home Remodeler. For more information about today's topic and upcoming episodes of Today's Home Remodeler, please visit these websites.
The preceding program was sponsored by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network.